Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, I'm going to be looking at a free piece of software called Atrip. This program allows you to automatically geotag photos. What this basically means is it will take a photo that you've taken and place it on a map at the location where that photo was taken. To achieve this, you need to have a GPS unit. A GPS is basically something that will automatically log where you've been. It's the same technology that's used in in-car satellite navigation systems. So to get started, I need to download and install the software. So I'll go to the Atrip website, click on Downloads, and then from here I'm looking for the Atrip PC application. As you can see, that's listed at the top, and I simply need to download the application to get it installed. OK, as you can see, my software's now successfully been installed, and I'm ready to get started. The first thing you need to do is obviously to go on some sort of trip. This could be a field trip, or it could simply be a walk around the school grounds. All you need to do is make sure you take a GPS logger with you, as well as a camera. Now, the software is designed to work with a GPS logger called an iGotU. This is an incredibly easy to use piece of equipment, and it only costs £50. However, if you haven't got one of those, you may well have a GPS logger without knowing it. For example, if you've got an iPhone that has a GPS receiver built in. I use my iPhone along with an application called Trails. It only cost me £2.39, so it's quite a cost-effective way of getting started. So saved on my desktop, I've got the GPS file taken from the iPhone, and I've also got a folder of photos that I took on my trip. So to get started, I'm going to launch the Atrip software. The first thing I need to do is to import my GPS file. To do that, I click on the button in the top left hand corner. I'm presented with two options. The first one will allow me to import data directly from my GPS receiver. So if I had the I got you, I could plug it into the computer and select that option there. But since I don't, I'm going to select the second option and I've got to find my GPX file on my computer, which I've got saved on my desktop. I now need to give my trip a suitable name. Now my walk was along the cliffs at St Margaret's Bay in Kent, but a word of warning, the software doesn't like the use of apostrophes, so I can't use the word St Margaret's Bay. Instead, I'm going to enter cliff top walk. Okay, there we go, and I'll select OK. As you can see, it's successfully found that route, and it's telling me that the start time of that walk was 12 minutes past one. Now I actually know that I started this walk an hour earlier, so it's offset by one hour. I think the reason for this is it's got a little bit confused with the daylight saving. I actually did this walk only a couple of days after the clocks changed. So to correct this, I'm going to have to tick on daylight saving, and as you can see, it's now taken that back to the correct time. You shouldn't have to do this every time though, I think it's just a little bug with my walk. So I'll click on next. I now need to select a suitable style for my map. I'm going to leave this on the classic style because we have an opportunity to change this later. I now need to add all the photos that I took on my walk. Again, I'm going to have to turn off daylight saving, but you shouldn't have to do this. I'll click on add and select all of my photos in my folder and then click on open. I then click on next. What it's now doing is it's looking at every single photo, trying to work out where it belongs on my walk. The way it does this is it looks at the time a photo was taken, let's say 12.30, and then works out where exactly I was at that time. It then places that photo at that location. Now what it's asking me here is whether I want to actually store that location information as part of the photo. It's not actually necessary to do this for the Atrip software to work, but it could be useful if you wanted to use another mapping program with your photos, for example Google Earth. So I'm going to select Yes to All. OK, as you can see, it's now completed that task, and it's telling me that one photo couldn't be matched. Now, this could well be that the photo was taken outside of the trip. Maybe it was taken the previous day, or maybe it was taken just before or just after the GPS file was created. But we can fix that later, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So I'm going to click on Finish, and what it's going to do is it's going to show me a map with my route plotted, and also photos dotted along that route. Let me zoom in to show you what this looks like. OK, there we go, there's the route. The purple line shows the route I actually walked, and the little camera icons show the position of the photos that I took. The S shows the start of the route, and the E shows the end of the route. So I actually walked along the cliff and then back again, which is why the end point is so close to the start. To walk through my route, all I have to do is click on the play button here, and we'll see that the car begins to move, and then when it comes to a photo, it's going to show the photo in a pop-up window.
Now I can increase or decrease the speed at which the car moves by clicking these buttons here. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to click on stop now. So I've noticed a couple of problems with my photos there. Firstly, a couple of them were taken in the wrong orientation, so I need to rotate them. And also, they're not quite exactly where I want them to be. This could be because maybe the time on my camera was a couple of minutes different to the time on my GPS receiver. So I can fix this by going to Edit Trip, which is this button just here. From this window, I can change the orientation of my photos, and I can also position them exactly where they are on the map. To do this, I only need to know the location of one of the photos. I'm going to click on this button here, which will allow me to locate the photos. I want to adjust the time for every single photo, because I believe that they're all off by maybe a couple of minutes. So I'll select that and click on Next. What it's now asking me to do is to pick one photo for which I know the exact location. I'm going to pick this picture here because it's a gate and I know exactly where it is on my route. So I'll click on Next. Now what I have to do is select the exact time or location where this photo was taken. So I need to be able to look at this along with the map at the same time. Now I'm a little bit too zoomed out here, so I'm going to click on the plus button here to zoom in on my map until I have a better view of where it is. Okay, there we go, that's better, I can see what I'm doing now. So that camera icon shows the position where the computer thinks this photo was taken, but I actually know that it was taken at this point here where two tracks crossed. So I'm going to have to adjust the time until the camera icon is at that point. So I'll click on this point here, and I think I'm going to adjust the seconds, and I'll do that with the up and down arrows here. As you can see, as I'm adding time, the marker is moving along my track, so I'll keep doing that until it gets to the correct place. OK, that's perfect. So when I click on Finish, it's going to automatically offset all of the photos by the correct amount, so they should all be automatically placed. Now you may remember when I imported the photos, there was one image that couldn't be imported, and this process could well fix that by offsetting the time enough to allow it to be part of my route. So that's the first step completed. I know that my photos are now positioned exactly where I took them. The next thing I need to do is to rotate some of my images so they're correctly orientated. To do this, I right click on the image and choose rotate left or rotate right. I'm going to go through my photos making the corrections I need. OK, there we go, I've correctly orientated all my photos. The next thing I'm going to do is to name the images and possibly to include some extra information. So let's have a look at this image here. This is a photo I took of a caterpillar. It's got just the standard name produced by my camera. I'm going to replace that with a more helpful name. And then I can also include a description. OK, there we go, there's my title and description added. I'm going to click on OK, and then I'm going to tag some more of these photos with some more information. OK, there we go, there's the final piece of information on my photos. As you can see, I've given them all a suitable name, and also a little bit of extra information. I may be asking the children a question that I'd like them to think about, or it could be a prompt, for example, how could this image influence a story that you're writing? So I'm happy with what I've done now. I'm going to click on Save and Save Changes. It's now asking me if I want to write that GPS information to my photos again. I'm going to click on Yes to All because each of my photos has moved slightly. I just need to repeat that task. OK, so that information has been saved and we can see if I click on the play button, the extra information that I tagged my photos with is now displayed above each image. So we finished tagging all of our photos, but what we really want to do is to share this with other people somehow. And this is really easy to do with the software because I can click on this button here and share my trip. What it's going to do is it's going to upload my route and all of my photos and my extra information that I've tagged those photos with to the A-Trip server. Now I'm going to make this public. Depending upon what your images are of and what your descriptions include, you might want to make this private. But I'm going to leave mine as public for the moment. It's now asking me to enter my login details for the Atrip server. If you haven't created an Atrip account, you can do so very easily by clicking the new account button here. That will open a web browser from where we can enter our information. Now it's completely free to sign up and it is necessary to do if you want to share your route online. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this information and then click create account. 
Okay, there we go. I've entered my personal information. I've clicked on create account and it's now telling me that my account has been created, but I just need to click on the email that I'll receive just to authorize my account. So as we can see, I've received a new email from Atrip. All I have to do is click on the link here just to authorize my account and then I'll be ready to log in from the Atrip software and share my route with other people. Okay, so my account has now been activated and I can now log in with the details I registered with. Okay, I now need to enter a category just to help people as they search for my route. I'm going to select hiking and I'm also going to include some tags just to help them further. Okay, there's some tags that I've included. I now click on next and it's asking me where I want to store my photos. Do I want to store them on the Atrip server, at Picasa or Flickr? I'm going to leave this on the Atrip server. Right, as you can see, what it's doing is it's uploading all of my photos and my GPS route to the Atrip server. Depending upon how many photos you've got will obviously affect how long this takes. So we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, there we go. As you can see, it's completed that process and I now have a link to my route. So let's click on that and see how this looks. Okay, as you can see, my information is loaded. If I scroll down, I've got all of my photos here, including my tags and my titles. I also have an option to allow children to comment on this. But what's most important is this option at the top, which will actually replay my route. So I've actually got three options here. I've got a map view, I've got a photo view, which is simply a slideshow, and I've also got a 3D view. Let's start with the map view. I'll click on that and then select play from the timeline here. So as you can see, as the car moves around my route, it will display the photos along with my titles and my descriptions. Let's have a look at the 3D view. To access this, I click on this button here, which will switch between map view, photo view, and 3D view. This is the photo view, which is simply a slideshow. So I'll press it once more, and we'll have a look at the 3D view. As you can see, it's zooming in on my route, and when I click on play, it's going to start driving around my route and displaying the photos as it comes to them. So this is quite fun. As you can see, the truck drives around my route. As it reaches a photo, it pops it up in a little window and then it will move on with my route. Okay, there we go. That's how we can share our information online. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, there are three different templates you can use. I'm just going to show you how we can change those templates. I'm going to go into the settings option. And then from here, I'm going to select the templates button. Now we selected the classic style template to begin with, but we could use a sporting style, which is going to show me some elevation data as well as my map and my photos. Or we could use a simple style. Now the other thing we can change from here is the appearance of our runner. This is our position marker on the map. To do this, I'll click on this button here. And at the moment, I'm set up as a car. But because this was a walking route, I'm actually going to change this to the pair of flip-flops and click on OK. This is obviously just for fun, but the children certainly enjoy seeing a pair of flip-flops moving around their route. When I'm done, I'll click on Save. And then I can re-upload this to the Atrip server and it will apply those changes. So there we go, that's how we can use a free piece of software to combine GPS information and photos. This is an excellent thing to do if you're going on a field trip or even if you're just looking for inspiration for story writing, for example. Why not explore your school grounds, take some photos, add some prompts, and then the children have got a map as their story plan rather than perhaps the more traditional story ladder. I do hope you found this tutorial useful. I will add a link to the shared map onto the iPrimary website so you can have a look at how my finished route looked. Thanks very much for watching.